I welcome all to the course on control system engineering. In this video, we are going to learn the mathematical modeling of physical systems. We already know that the control system is the connection of different physical components connected to achieve an objective. To achieve this objective, we need to control different physical components so that we have to derive the relation between different physical components of a system. Generally, this input-output relation of a system is expressed by the differential equation. So that by solving these equations, we can know the response of a system under various input conditions. This process is called mathematical modeling of a system. In this video, we are going to discuss about two different physical system modeling. One is mechanical systems modeling. Second one is electrical systems modeling. First, we'll discuss the mathematical modeling of mechanical systems. Based on the motion of the body, the mechanical systems are classified into translational and rotational systems. In translational system, the motion of the body is along a straight line of the body whereas in rotational mechanical system the motion of the body on its own axis first we'll see the mathematical modeling of translational mechanical system before going to the modeling let us know what are the basic components used in the translational systems first one is mass this is the physical model of the mass. It is considered that the mass of the body is concentrated at the center of the element. When the force is applied on the mass body, there is a displacement takes place in the, in the same direction of force applied. When the force is applied, the equal and opposing force acting on the body is directly proportional to the acceleration acting on the body. Therefore, Fm is equal to m into A, where m is the mass of the body and A is the acceleration. As we know that acceleration is the second order derivative of displacement x, we can substitute d square x by dt square instead of A. Therefore, the force balance equation F is equal to Fm, that is nothing but m into d square x by dt square. Come to the second basic component of translational system that is dashpot. And this is the physical model of the dashpot where one end is fixed. Here dashpot causes viscous friction between solid body and the fluid medium. Due to the viscous friction, when the force is applied, there is a displacement takes place and causes opposing force due to the friction. And this opposing force is directly proportional to the velocity dx by dt. Therefore, Fb is equal to b into dx by dt, where b is the viscous coefficient. Therefore, by the net balance, force balance equation, F is equal to Fb, that is equal to B into dx by dt. In this example, one end of the dashpot is fixed. But sometimes both ends may be free. In, the, in such case, the force acting on the dashpot is directly proportional to the differential displace, differential velocity. Therefore, Fb is equal to b into d by dt of x1 minus x2. By the net ba force balance equation, we have F is equal to Fb, that is equal to b into d by dt of x1 minus x2. Come to the third basic component and this is the physical model of spring. 
when the force is applied on the spring the spring the opposing force acting due to the elasticity elasticity on the spring is directly proportional to the displacement therefore fk is equal to k into x therefore by the net force balance equation f is equal to fk that is equal to k into x in this example one end of the spring is fixed when the two ends of the spring are free then the opposing force acting on the spring is directly proportional to x1 minus x2 that is differential displacement therefore fk is equal to k into x1 minus x2 by the net force balance equation f is equal to fk that is equal to k into x1 minus x2 now we are familiar with the basic components of mechanical translational systems now we'll start the derivation of transfer function of mechanical translational system we'll see the procedure first then we'll move on and to an example the first step is we have to consider the mass elements in the system as nodes that means as many number of masses we should consider them as the number of nodes next point is we have to assign the displacement variables like x1 x2 and so on to each mass element the third one is we have to draw each mass element separately with all forces acting on it and say that diagram is called free body diagram we have to do the same step for all the mass elements present in the given system now we have to write the differential equations from each free body diagram by using the force balance equation that is sum of applied forces is equal to the sum of opposing forces and fifth step is in fourth step we have got the differential equations for each free body diagram now we have to take the laplace transform for the obtained differential equations after the laplace transform will get all the terms in s domain and we have to rearrange it to get the transfer function that is x of s by f of s let us take an example of the given system to derive for the transfer function in this example we have two mass elements so first we'll consider these two mass elements as two nodes m1 and m2 since the displacement variables x1 and x2 are already given in the second step as we discussed the linear displacements x1 and x2 variables are no need to assign here in this example because already x1 and x are given in the problem itself the third step is we have to separate the mass element each mass element with all forces acting on it separately and we'll say it is a free body diagram so take the first node m1 and the components connected to m1 in this we have if you write separately this node with all forces acting on this we can observe five opposing forces acting on this first one is due to the mass body itself say that is f m1 and second component connected is b1 where b1 is the free viscous friction between the surface and mass body m1 and say this opposing force as fb1 and third is b element that is dash pot which is connected in between m1 and m2 
say the opposing force acting on it is Fb and fourth one is K1, the spring which is connected between M1 and fixed end. The opposing force due to this spring acting on M1 say Fk1 and finally the fifth opposing force is due to the spring K which is connected in between M1 and M2. And the displacement acting on this M1 is X1. Now we'll see the free body diagram at the second node. Here we have two opposing forces acting on M2 and the applied force is F of T. Here, the opposing force acting on the mass body itself is called Fm2. Then, second opposing force is due to B2, the viscous friction acting in between the surface and M2 mass body. And third opposing force is due to the dash part, which is connected in between M1 and M2. And fourth opposing force is due to the spring element which is acting in between M1 and M2 so, and say the opposing force is Fk and F of T is the applied force. By the force balance equation you will write this applied force F of T is equal to all the opposing some of the opposing forces mentioned in this free body diagram. Now we'll start to write differential equation of each free body diagram. Take the first body part, free body diagram. In this free body diagram, we know that five opposing forces are there. In this first opposing force Fm1 is given by M1 into d square x1 by dt square. All this relations are already discussed at the time of basic components. And Fb1, this is due to the friction. We have the relation Fb1 is equal to B1 into dx1 by dt. And Fb is due to the dash part that is equal to b into d by dt of x1 minus x. Here the differential velocity is due to the dash part is connected in between m1 and m2. The next the opposing force fk1 is due to the spring k1 and this is connected only to m1 to the fixed end therefore we have only x1. And Fk finally is directly proportional to the differential displacement due to the spring is connected in between M1 and M2. Therefore, Fk is equal to K into X1 minus X. By the force balance equation, we have Fm1 plus Fb1 plus Fb plus Fk1 plus Fk is equal to zero. Because here, no applied force this sum of the opposing forces is equal to zero. After substituting all this individual opposing forces in this force balance equation, we will get M1 into d square x1 by dt square plus B1 into dx1 by dt plus B into d by dt of x1 minus x plus k1 x1 plus k into x1 minus x is equal to zero. Say this equation as the first equation. Similarly, we'll write the differential equation for the second free body diagram. Here, the all opposing forces Fm2, Fb2, Fb, and Fk are given by the force balance equations. If you apply all these opposing forces in the force balance equation Fm2 plus Fb2 plus Fb plus Fk is equal to F of t, 
here the all the opposing forces sum of the opposing forces is equal to the applied force f of t if we substitute all the opposing forces we will get m2 into d square x by dt square plus b2 into dx by dt plus b into d by dt of x minus x1 plus k into x minus x1 is equal to f of t and say this is equation number 2. Now we'll take the Laplace transform for the derived differential equations. If you apply the Laplace transform and the first differential equation, we will get m1 s square into x1 of s plus b1 s into x1 of s plus b into s of x1 of s minus x of s plus k1 x1 of s plus k into x1 of s minus x of s is equal to zero. We know that the Laplace transform of second order derivative is s square into x1 of s. Therefore, we'll get the differential equation like this. After taking common x1 of s, we'll get x1 of s into m1 s square plus b1 into b1 plus b into s plus k1 plus k minus if you take common x of s we'll get x1 of s into b s plus k the sum is equal to zero after sending this x of s term to the right hand side we'll get x1 of s into m1 s square plus b1 plus b into s plus k1 plus k is equal to x of s into b s plus k. And if we derive this expression for x1 of s, we will get x1 of s is equal to x of s into b s plus k whole divided by m1 s square plus b1 plus b into s plus k1 plus k and say this is equation number three similar way apply the laplace transform for the second equation we will get m2 s square into x of s plus b2 into s x of s plus b into s into x of s minus x1 of s plus k into x of s minus x1 of s is equal to f of s. Now, let us take common x of s and x1 of s terms separately. Then we'll get x of s into m2 s square plus b2 plus b into s plus k minus x1 of s into b s plus k is equal to f of s and say this is equation number four now we'll rearrange this equation number three and four laplace domain equations to get the transfer function formula let us take the third equation and fourth equation and let us substitute the third equation x1 of s expression into fourth equation then we'll get x1 of x of s into m2 s square plus b2 plus b into s plus k minus x of s into b s plus k whole square whole divided by m1 s square plus b1 plus b into s plus k1 plus k that is equal to f of s Now take common x of s in the two terms at left hand side, then we'll get x of s into m2 s square plus b2 plus b into s plus k, we hold into m1 s square plus b1 plus b into s plus k1 plus k minus b s plus k whole square, the whole divided by m1 s square plus b1 plus b into s 
plus k1 plus k that is equal to f of s now take the ratio of x of s to f of s then we will get m1 s square plus b1 plus b into s plus k1 plus k whole divided by m1 s square plus b1 plus b into s plus k1 plus k into m2 s square plus b2 plus b into s plus k minus b s plus k whole square and this is our desired transfer function of the given system and see one practice problem is given here hope you all practice and cross verify with this solution now we now we will move on to the mechanical rotational systems before going to the mathematical modeling let us see the basic components of rotational systems that first one is momentum of inertia it is also called rotational mass element and this is the basic model of rotational mass element where j is the momentum of inertia when the torque is applied on the rotational mass element there is an angular displacement theta due to the applied torque there is an opposing torque due to the momentum of inertia which is directly proportional to the angular acceleration we know that the angular acceleration is nothing but the second order derivative of angular displacement we have the opposing torque tz is equal to j into d square theta by dt square by the torque balance equation we have t is equal to tz which is equal to j into d square theta by dt square and the second basic element is dashpot and this is the basic model of dashpot with one end fixed where b is the viscous friction coefficient when the torque t is applied on the dashpot the opposing torque due to the friction tb is directly proportional to the angular velocity we know that the angular velocity is the first order derivative of the angular displacement theta we have the opposing torque tb is equal to b into d theta by dt by the torque balance equation we have t is equal to tb that is equal to b into d theta by dt when the two ends of dashpot are free and when the torque t is applied on it the opposing torque tb is directly proportional to the differential angular velocity therefore the opposing torque tb is equal to b into d by dt of theta 1 minus theta 2 by the torque balance equation we have t is equal to tb that is equal to b into d by dt of theta 1 minus theta 2 the third basic element is torsional spring and this is the basic model of torsional spring with one end fixed when the torque t is applied on the spring there is an opposing torque due to the elasticity which is directly proportional to the angular displacement theta therefore the opposing torque tk is equal to k into theta by the torque balance equation we have t is equal to tk that is equal to k into theta when the two ends of the spring are free then the opposing torque tk is directly proportional to the differential angular displacement therefore tk is equal to k into theta 1 minus theta 2 by the torque balance equation we have t is equal to tk that is equal to k into theta 1 minus theta 2 now we are familiar with the basic components of rotational systems now let us move on to the transfer function derivation of mechanical rotational systems before going to the derivation with an example let us see the procedure the first step is we have to consider the mass elements with momentum of inertia j1 j2 and so on as a node then let us consider or assign 
the angular displacements theta 1, theta 2, and so on to each mass element. And third step is we have to draw separately each rotational mass element J1, J2, and so on with all torques acting on it and say each diagram has a free body diagram. And the fourth step is we have to derive the differential equation from each free body diagram. And in fifth step, we have to apply the Laplace transform for each differential equation obtained in the fourth step. And in sixth step, we have to rearrange this Laplace domain equations to obtain the transfer function that is nothing but theta of s by t of s. Now, let us move on to the example. Write the differential equations governing the mechanical system as shown in the figure and derive the transfer function. In this example, we have two rotational mass bodies, J1 and J2. So in the first step of the solution, we'll consider two nodes as we have two mass elements of momentum of inertia. And in second step, we will assume the angular displacements. Already theta is given for the second node, J2. So for the J1, we'll assign the angular displacement as theta1. Now we'll draw the free body diagram from each node. Take the first node where J1 is having one spring element connected. Therefore, the free body diagram is like this, where the opposing tasks are only two due to the rotational mass element itself, T, J1, and the torque due to the spring, K, T, K. Now, the free body diagram at the second node, J2, is drawn separately. Therefore, we came to know that there are three opposing tasks acting on J2. That is TJ2, the opposing task acting on itself and the opposing task due to the dashpot B and third is the opposing task due to the spring. Now we'll try to derive the differential equation from each free body. Since in the first free body diagram, we have two opposing torques and one applied torque T. First, we'll write the opposing torque expressions. Tj1 is equal to J1 into d square theta1 by dt square. Since the angular displacement is theta1 here, we have theta1 in the expression and J1 is the momentum of inertia. Therefore, T J1 is equal to J1 into d square theta 1 by dt square. And the second opposing torque is Tk due to the spring equation. We have Tk is equal to K into theta 1 minus theta. With theta 1 minus theta, differential angular displacement is taken due to the K is I mean, spring is connected in between J1 and J2. By the torque balance equation, the opposing torques, some of the opposing torques, Tj1 plus Tk is equal to the applied torque T. After substituting Tj1 and Tk, we will get J1 d square theta1 by dt square plus K into theta1 minus T is equal to T. If you write k theta 1, k theta separately, we will get j1 d square theta 1 by dt square plus k theta 1 minus k theta is equal to t. 
and say this is equation number one. If we write the differential equation at node two from second free body diagram, we have this opposing task dz2 is equal to j2 into d square theta by dt square tb is equal to b into d theta by dt and tk is equal to k into theta minus theta 1 where tk depends on the differential angular displacement and here theta minus theta 1 is obtained because we are writing the differential equation at j2 node theta comes first therefore tk is equal to k into theta minus theta 1 if you substitute these opposing forces in the torque balance equation we have j2 into d square theta by dt square plus b into d theta by dt plus k into theta minus theta 1 is equal to 0 after splitting k theta minus k theta 1 separately we have j t2 j2 into d square theta by dt square plus b into d theta by dt plus k theta minus k theta 1 is equal to 0 and say this is equation number 2 from equation 1 and equation 2 we have two differential equations now we'll apply the laplace transform for these two equations now let us apply the laplace transform on first equation after applying laplace transform we will get j1 s square theta 1s plus k into theta 1s minus k into theta of s is equal to t of s after taking common theta 1 of s from first two terms we will get j1 s square plus k into theta 1 of s minus k into theta of s is equal to t of s and say this is equation number three now we will apply the laplace transform second equation then we'll get j2 into s square into theta of s plus b into s into theta of s plus k theta of s minus k theta 1 of s is equal to 0 after taking common theta of s from first three terms we will get j2 s square plus b s plus k into theta of s minus k theta 1 of s is equal to 0 therefore we will get theta 1 of s is equal to j2 s square plus b s plus k whole divided by k into theta of s and say this is equation number four now we'll rearrange these laplace domain equations to get the transfer function take third and fourth equation and substitute the fourth equation theta one of s expression in third equation then we'll get j1 s square plus k into j2 s square plus b s plus k divided by k into theta of s minus k theta of s is equal to t of s now take common theta of s from left hand side terms we will get j1 s square plus k into j2 s square plus b s plus k minus k square whole divided by k into theta of s is equal to t of s now we'll take theta of s by t of s ratio is equal to k by j1 s square plus k into j2 s square plus b s plus k minus k square this is nothing but our desired transfer function of the given example and this is the practice example for your c please practice it and uh, these are the solution of the practice problem we can cross verify with the solution before end the session let us see the summary points discussed in this video in this video we learned about the basic components of mechanical translational and rotational systems and we learned the derivation of transfer function of mechanical translational systems and also 
learn the derivation of transfer function of mechanical rotational systems. In the next video will continue with the mathematical modeling of electrical systems. Thank you.